What's up, everybody? It's John Bush here from the Mighty Armored Saint, and you are watching That Metal Interview. A man who's supposed to be the vocalist for Metallica, a man who was a member, a frontman for Anthrax, and a man who is now and has been since about 1982 the frontman for Armored Saint. I'm talking about John Bush. The great John Bush from California is our guest. On this episode of that metal interview podcast and i ask him if they play my favorite song chemical euphoria live on this upcoming tour and he'll answer that anyways right now we're going to check out lone wolf from their latest album the last album they recorded punching the sky check it out
you can stream it now. A song called Lone Wolf. You can also stream it on YouTube or just the audio from the album Punching the Sky, the last album they put out in 2020 via Metal Blade Records. And they are working on some new stuff, as John Bush tells us on this interview. And right now, let's go directly to the interview with John Bush. Check it out. How are you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm here in uh, I'm in Texas. So where uh, where yet? Where I'm in LA, Southern California, my hometown. Where in Texas? I'm in uh, Eagle Pass, about a couple of hours from San Antonio. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So you're 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 in the you're in the throes of a lot of controversy right there, huh? Oh, that's right. That's right. We're in the all over the news, huh? We're just uh, the immigrant thing, the illegals and all yeah. that. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, um, you know, I'm sure you have a lot of opinions on that, but uh, we're supposed to talk about rock and roll, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the first question I ask everybody, uh, where are you at? What part of the planet? You just told me, right? California. Yeah, we're, I'm in L.A. With my wife and I live in uh, the Mid-Wilshire area, Los Angeles, like Fairfax and Pico. If you basically between downtown and Santa Monica, if you looked at a map, we're right in the middle of that. So, you know, Santa Monica is the beach downtown LA and if you, right down the 10 freeway we're in the middle it's called Mid Wilshire and there's a bunch of museums around here and it's cool a neighborhood I live right by Little Ethiopia so I don't know if you've ever had Ethiopian food but you eat with your this bread called injera and it's really good oh really okay never tried it I'll, I'll give it a shot one day <laughs> okay I well, recommend it right uh, so uh, you guys have a, a US tour coming up uh, with Queensryche here very soon here you guys already are you excited first of all hell yeah it's gonna be awesome queen's Rike is an incredible band uh they're doing something really fun on this tour with playing their ep in the warning in its entirety um great group of guys super cool just awesome like family um eddie jackson sometimes makes food for us and he's just a rag cook and not that he's obligated to doing that um <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun everyone's psyched we haven't toured since the wasp run and which was in um the end of 22 so uh we didn't we didn't do any dates in 23 so uh we're ready to go yeah that got canceled out right some uh, blackie had some problems or something yeah the second leg got canceled which was a big drag because uh the first leg did so well and we played some great shows in in texas corpus, corpus christi and dallas and uh well, that actually, Wasp didn't play that one particular show, but we did. Um, Houston, um, we're coming back to some of those territories. And we're going to play some shows with Dangerous Toys after um, the Queensryche run because the Queensryche run ends in Florida and we have to make our way back to L.A. So we're, we're going to head south along from the country and we're going to stop in Texas and, and do some shows with a couple of Dangerous Toys. Uh, as a matter of fact, Dallas and Houston. That's going to be fun. Well, very cool. I'll catch you guys there for sure. Um, cool. Yeah, so Jason did cover for you for a gig or two, huh? Uh, About car gigs, yeah, yeah. He was he bailed me out. I got a little under the weather and uh, kind of blew my voice out. And um, he came and rescued me and the band. And you know, he's been a saint fan and friend since 1985 when we met him on the Metallica Wasp Armored Saint tour back in, in 1985 in Texas. Really? The Camp yeah. Theater in San Antonio, Texas, um, and we've been friends ever since. So um, he, he he really bailed Armored Saint out a lot, and I'm grateful for him. Doing that. Was he your first choice for for this uh, occasion, or did you have a couple guys in mind? Or no, he was pretty much our first choice. I think it was it might have been uh, Joey and or our agent Dan Davida's idea. I totally supported it. Um, we didn't want to cancel shows. You know, it's a drag when you cancel. Um, it becomes very costly to do that. Um, you know, a lot of people were eager to see Armored Saint on that run, so um, it was weird. I'm not going to deny that it was very surreal being in the audience watching Armored Saint play, but not <laughs> me out there. Uh, it was pretty bizarre and pretty humbling, quite frankly. But uh, again, I was grateful that Jason came and, and, and bailed us all out, including myself. So it was awesome. And he did, he did so well. Oh, Jason's badass. He's a badass singer. Uh, I was does all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, when I heard you guys got him, I was like, "Wow, that's the perfect." Because you have like a graspy voice, right? Yourself and uh, yeah. Jason, kind of. There's a little similarity there, so perfect. 
Yeah, and you know, he, he did a lot of homework and, and in a very quick period of time, it was a very quick turnover. And um, basically I get a day and then he was flying out to Baltimore. And um, he also did that for Accept. When uh, Mark from Accept got sick, he actually went and helped them out for a few shows. So, you know, he's like the, he's the awesome relief pitcher. You call him from the bullpen. It's like, get in here. And <laughs> hopefully knock on wood, I don't need him for this tour. Uh, only a bit. I want him there. I just don't want him to have to bail me out again. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, Jason, all the respect to him, but you, people want to see you. You well, are the you know, it's, it's The problem with being in a band and touring is it's not even some Broadway play where you have an understudy and you're like, I'm sick, so let's bring in the understudy. There's no understudy. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> you, you, you've got to just kind of go out and do it. And, um, you know, sometimes you get sick, it's, it's rough, you know, so. Have you guys started uh, rehearsals or, or or not yet? Well, we just did the Monsters of Rock Cruise with Dangerous Toys, who was also on that. They were great, uh, as, as well as many other bands. Um, it was a lot of fun, except for that we didn't get a chance to play our second performance there because a storm came in and uh, we were the last band on the pool stage and it, it was a major storm that we could, there was no way to play. And so we were really bummed. We only played once and every band plays twice. But we had a great time. Um, and we did a lot of prep rehearsal for that. So um, we're gonna do start rehearsing again come Saturday. And you know, we should be ready to go. Um, like I said, it's mainly because we did so much prep for the boat. Um, so this is just gonna be fine tuning some stuff. Yeah, so how about the, the set list? Uh, who chooses the songs or is it all the guys pitching ideas or is it yourself? Or how, how, what's that process like? Well, I mean, everyone sure, certainly contributes ideas for that. Um, <laughs> I usually put it together, and then we'll just kind of figure some stuff out regarding tuning and <clears throat> segues from one song to another that might work better than another one. Um, I always like messing around with the set a little bit because we have a lot of records, so we have a lot of songs to choose from, and I want to play a lot of those songs. So um, sometimes I'll change it. and. Um, you know, who knows by the time, you know, we start till, you know, two weeks in, it, it might be very different. Um, plus, you got to figure out what's working. I also don't want to play the same songs that we played if we played that place, you know, a year before. So um, I'm always consulting that and um, trying to make sure that we show the vast catalog of our insane. So it's uh, it's fun. You guys are doing my favorite song, uh, Chemical Euphoria, right? Chemical is usually a mainstay in set, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm messing around with changing that and Raising Fear, depending, um, because we haven't played Raising Fear a lot lately. Um, we also might even play Isolation here and there, which is a song we haven't played in years. Well, that's um, right. Yeah, um, so again, it just depends. Like, I really look at um, setlistfm.com, which is a great website that, you know, I mean, I, I think they're pretty accurate, um, but you know, they, they'll have a lot of set lists from shows that you did. So, you know, next time I, you know, we're in Houston or, you know, Dallas or, oh, look, what did we play? I mean, the last time, what did we play? Okay, well, we played that and, you know, let's change that because we played that last time. So, you know, of course there's certain songs that you kind of have to play. We all know yeah. that. Um, yeah. um, but, you know, I don't know. As long as you play some hits, you don't have to necessarily play all the hits, and especially if you, you know, again, I think it's just you got to fill it out. It feels what feels what what feels right. Um, so, oh yeah, a fan's a fan, and we'll appreciate whatever you guys uh, deep cuts. We'll appreciate cool. anything. I want to hold you to it, James. Right, I'll be there. I'll go check it out. I'll go check it out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> is there any is there any song uh, from the catalog, John, that? maybe gives you a hard time or that you might you don't want to sing live you tell the guys you know what uh, not this one <laughs> well i mean there was a period of time like between like 1987 and 91 simple salvation i was singing a lot higher than i did when i started and how i do now um yeah. when you age the fact of the matter is your voice gets deeper it's just a normal thing it happens to everybody it probably happens to getty lee you know i mean it's just everybody um so, you know, there are some challenging songs because I am a lot older than I was then. I'm not going to deny it. And I sing a little differently. I think my voice is more comfortable in the mid-range area. Um, and it just sounds warmer and better and stronger. 
Um, so I do make some adjustments um, if I need to. If we, if I want to play a song and I know that it's just kind of out of my range at this point, um, I'll adjust it a little bit. Um, you know, it's a live, it's a live moment. It's a fleeting moment. You know, although everything is on YouTube like hours later anyway. You can't have a bad gig anymore. It's like oh, it's terrible. I'm like, hey man, you know, like LeBron James sometimes goes, you know, shoots bad and makes turnovers. Like you're not on every game, you know. So, uh, but like you can't because everything's on YouTube right away. So it's like, man, if you sucked, you gotta live with it. That's life. You know, it, it's life. It's, it, we're a live band. Um, I actually welcome it. Believe it or not, I welcome mistakes. I welcome a couple sour notes perhaps or you know because then it feels live and everything these days with so much stuff recorded and pre-recorded and you don't even know who's playing and that even goes for some metal bands you know i it's like hey, you know what it's live you know that's that's how you know it's live maybe there's an imperfection there it's rock and roll like it's never meant to be perfect you know and so like yeah zeppelin is still one of the greatest bands of all time but Sometimes live, they were terrible, but like, it's it's live, and then and it should feel live. I mean, Armored Saint is, I always say, we're like a glorified garage band. Started in the garage band, and I'm in the garage, and you know, that's kind of how we are. We're loose. Um, I don't want to be so loose that it's a big, you know, everyone's making massive mistakes, and it's a big train wreck. But if there's a looseness to it, I think that's what gives us a, a cool factor. So I welcome it. But, you know, again, certain songs, if it's just something that I want to play, but it's a little hard, I might make a little adjustment. Um, you know, that pickers might go, oh, we didn't see that. And, and they, they might be right. Right. <laughs> so, so how does it feel uh, playing with the same three guys, basically? Uh, Jeff came in at about, what, 89 or so. How, how does that feel, John? It must be awesome to go up there and the same chemistry's there, the same uh, comfort, comfort zone, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it is, you know, we've talked about it a lot, and it, it is rare for bands that have the same guys. Really, it is the same, other than Dave, um, who, who passed away a long time ago now. But um, yeah. we miss him. You know, I wish Dave was here. I wish he was, you know, we're rocking the three guitar players. Um, but um, it's cool. It is, you know, it is a different thing, especially for older bands. Um, gosh, we did the boat, and there's people that, you know, there's bands that, most of the people passed away in the band that we were watching. And, you know, so it's like, um, yeah, I think that we're still going. It's still does. I mean, I'm not to paint any imaginary picture here. It's not always, you know, you know, uh, chocolates and roses. That's just not the truth. But I mean, you know, once we get out there and we have the, the kind of the primary focus and that is to be a great band and go out there and tear it up, we're pretty unified. So, um, yeah, it's great. Well, it's just a, a badass, uh, badass chemistry there. You guys sound badass. You still sound badass after all these years. You guys just kick ass. Uh, what's the secret there to the secret sauce to having a, uh, the same voice, John? You sing the same. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I think it's just uh, well at this point I take much better care of myself <laughs> than I used to. Um, <laughs> you kind of have to as you get older. You could get away with stuff when you're 22, but you ain't gonna do that at 60 and late 50s. So. Um, you know, try to be better uh, with you know my daily rituals, and um, even though it gets annoying, but um, you know, probably ease off the whiskey a little bit. Although Dimebag would have told you otherwise, he'd probably say increase it. But um, <laughs> you know, it's I think it's just taking care of yourself. And I mean, God, when I got sick though, I was I didn't drink that whole. I mean, I don't drink a lot, lot, but I drink um, and. That whole tour, I didn't drink one sip of alcohol. As a matter of fact, my wife and I and Joey and Tracy, his wife, went out to dinner a couple of days later and I had some drinks thinking, okay, and I was like hammered because I hadn't drank in so long. So, um, but I was still like, I would, that's, I was pissed about the problem getting sick because I was like, I, I was doing everything right. That's life, what are you gonna do? So, um, you know, you, you just, I mean, sometimes life just throws your curves and you just got to roll with it. But um, yeah, just, I think that's the key is everybody kind of staying focused, trying to stay healthy. Um, you know, you're on a bus with people, so you just don't know what's going to happen. And hopefully, you know, the virus comes, it goes quick or whatever. But 
you know, I think that we, I think for Armored Saint, you know, what I always say is that it wasn't like we were some band that made tons of money and sold yeah. millions and millions of records. We just didn't do that. We wanted to, but we didn't. It wasn't uh, the path that we went down. However, we have made awesome music that I think a lot of people who are fans of ours are very connected to. So I think that is one of the driving forces is that, you know, we love, we do it for the music. I mean, because it's not like we're doing it for tons of money because we just, we don't make that much money. So, um, so you have to do it for the, re for the love of the music. And I think that is really the source of it. So. Well, that's the truth right there. I mean, uh, some people think uh, you guys uh, are loaded and, multi-millionaires and you know you go out there you make five six million bucks on merchandise and i'm sure you make okay money you know but people have that you know uh, yeah there's some weird thing on wikipedia or somewhere that says i'm worth like 40 million dollars and a few of my friends just are constantly busting my chops about <laughs> it then where's my money where's my loan and i'm like you always laugh it's like man that is really far off um i wish you know <laughs> It's just comical, and it's like, wow! Like, why do you put something that's some, you know, viable? Like, you know, maybe a couple million, but forty. It's just like, it's really silly. But again, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. If we do okay, you know, we're gonna go on the road. We're gonna sell some merchandise, and we're gonna do okay. But you know, you come back, you pay some bills, and then you're like, wow, what? The money go. Um, like everybody else that's just is just trying to get by and and do and live life but uh yeah like the music is i think a, a big catalyst and i know that could sound cheesy and we love to do for the music but we do because you know because they're that's really the main reason you know, i love playing these songs and you know, our records and when somebody tells me that this song on this record you know really touched them i mean that that's enough for me. that's that's the reason right there Okay, cool. So, uh, jump in into uh, your time with Anthrax. My favorite record is the sound of the white noise. Uh, the whole thing is badass, top to bottom. Uh, talk about that process, uh, the writing process. Uh, did you write any lyrics on there, or was just is it all the other guys? Or no, I wrote I wrote some lyrics. Me and Scott collaborated on a lot of the songs on that album and uh, on, on on many of the records. Uh, you know, I he was it was always interesting to work with him because Scott was the guy who wrote the bulk of the lyrics in Anthrax. So. Um, the unusual style because Charlie writes the bulk of the music, so it is a different kind of dynamic than most bands, especially heavy metal bands. But that's what, how it worked, and um, you know, it was kind of different to write with somebody. You know, you have to figure that out. I'm sure it felt the same for him. But we just would bounce ideas off one another, and and songs developed. And you know, Sound of White Noise was the first one, so it was all very new when I came in. So. And, and Anthrax was, everything was changing, you know, it was the 90s, and, um, you know, metal was metamorphosizing into something else, and um, there were some great bands that everybody was inspired by, like Soundgarden, and Alice in Chains, um, you know, Faith No More, and whatever, you name it. So, uh, it was a cool, it was a great time to be part of that, and um, still be part of the band that, you know, was this legendary group at that point, even, and great, incredible musicians and um you know I, was, I always cherish my times in anthrax i feel like we made some really great records and um really proud of it and um we had a lot of fun times played some awesome shows and a lot of funs and you know, a lot of laughs and fun times and i saw scott on his 60th birthday party just a couple weeks ago on well it was new year's actually so it was a couple months now but he had a big giant party with all these various musicians playing and he went in playing over 40 songs that he played the most on and uh it was really fun and he asked me to sing a few and um it was really it was just great and um it was a you know it was i played some stuff with frankie and charlie and um it was just a lot of fun so yeah it was you know there was a period of time when our relationship got a little distant but we're back now and 
it's all cool and they're kicking ass doing great and you know joey's out there joey belladonna's out there doing awesome for them and you know he's the voice of anthrax you know he should be there so. okay very cool uh those are my questions uh, are you in touch with these guys are you in contact but there you go are you you are in contact uh, it's cool it's it's you know we have a, we we had some fun times on new year's and um and like i said it was it was cool to play and you know it would be great for armored saint to do some shows with anthrax one day it would be really fun. right oh that'd be badass wow i saw your your performance with metallica uh 2011 uh, the 30th anniversary for those guys yeah yeah that was awesome four horsemen um uh, how was that experience and uh I, um, for sure that's a dumb question <laughs> well it was great it was awesome they they asked armored saint to actually open that show they only played like four and um you know it was at the Fillmore small venue in san francisco um for them that is and um it was great you know they played like i think every night they played different songs so it was great like even kirk had a music stand it was pretty funny like they really did something different and really uh, unique for the fan base um and we were honored to play with them as a support act that particular night and then um then we had the plan of me coming out and doing the four horsemen and telling the story and that it could have been the voice but it wasn't you know, whatever um, uh, but um it was awesome it was it was a great memory and um it was just a blast of a night a lot of really amazing musicians that were there and Lou Reed, who's passed on, Kit Rock, and um, you know King Diamond, and um, and then throughout the weekend, there was amazing people. There were Ozzy, Halford, you name it. So many different musicians there. So uh, yeah, Biford, really, really yeah. Fun. yeah, Biff. You know, so it was cool. It was great. Do you consider yourself a part of Metallica? Do you think? Would you say uh, you are? You were part. You were a part of them. Of course, you're with the Metallica family because because of all that, right? But do you consider yourself a part of Metallica? I mean, I consider myself, uh, you know, a good friend of theirs. Again, those relationships, those kind of, you know, we, we be, it, sometimes it gets distant, you know, and then we'd see each other and feel like we probably never stop talking, but, you know, they're a little busy. And uh, <laughs> but I see I see Robert Trujillo uh, actually a lot because he lives here in Southern California. He was yeah. at Scott. He was at Scott. I was actually surprised Kirk wasn't there, but because um, him and Kirk and Scott are pretty close. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, always going to feel of some connection there. I mean, Armored Saint, Metallica, Wasp tour, people still talk about that tour from 1985. That kind of was like a cutting edge tour at the time. And, um, you know, they they always say good things about Saint and, and John Bush. And I, I'm you know grateful for that. And, um, you know, they're the kings. What are you going to say? I mean, that's just the bottom line. And, um, you know, Metallica is one of those bands that I think I was always charging forward because they're always trying something different, pushing the boundaries, and um, and and you know when you do that, especially you've been around for a long, long time, not everything is going to connect. There, you know, you take chances, and sometimes they, the fans are like, eh, I don't know, you know, but it's the willingness to do that. That's what makes you look such a great band, and right, it breaks you from the pack. And um, let alone the success, that's one thing, of course, but it's how the success is achieved and, and sustained, I think, is really important. And I think by taking chances is a real big part of it. Um, yeah, some bands have a lot of success not taking too many chances. So I guess you can make that argument. But I do think that the bands that really, and this is, goes beyond metal, that really have the longevity, that have the long careers are ones that did take chances. And when you do that, sometimes, you know, you don't always connect every idea. It's just not possible. Um, but you still are willing to do that. And, and Metallica did that. You know, they, they've always done it by getting the orchestra. But, you know, the garage days or you know, it just is endless. They've always been a band that is, is looking to do something a little different to, to just kind of, you know, take the path, you know, take a different road and hear it. Here, come on, let's go this way now and see if the fans follow. Yep. And they, of course, normally do. So, yeah. Uh, so, speaking about yourself uh, a bit, uh, I read somewhere a couple years ago uh, that you were doing a tour, uh, like a solo tour, kind of. I guess where you do your your catalog with uh, all your uh, different projects and your career. I guess like, uh, did that ever happen, or it's just um, it hasn't? Um, you know, there's been talk about it, and you know, then then it comes to surfaces again, and then it's like, ah, I didn't do it. 
Um, I, I, I would like to, um, you know, especially going on maybe doing some of those Anthrax records because they don't play a lot of songs from it. I wish they played more, but I understand. Um, but, um, you know, there's some people that would like to hear a deep track from, you know, Stomp 442, and it would be fun to do it. Um, it's just about timing. Um, and, and one day, I always say one day, um, I guess I should, <laughs> you know, time is slightly of the essence because uh, of my age. So I'm not going to deny that. But um, I kind of got some other things going on right now. And so it's, it's going to have to find its way somehow to, to make it work with me. And I, I don't know when that'll be. <laughs> that'll be super interesting uh, for sure for fans because, uh, I mean, when you see Armored Saint live, it's not like you're gonna throw in there, like five Anthrax songs or <laughs> or no. other some other some other stuff, you know. But yeah, that'd be pretty cool for fans, you know. So yeah, anyway. you know, there's 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 an idea brewing with something. I can't really get into it right now, but you never know. Like, um, hopefully one day when it happens, I'll be like, oh, it's happened. This is happening. Kind of just surprises everybody. So here's a weird question, sci-fi question, uh, John. Uh, if you could time travel. Where would you travel to and what year? Wow. Um, that's a good question. Um, Wi-Fi. <laughs> well, I've always thought of the 70s because that was kind of when I discovered everything in music, but I lived that, so I don't want to necessarily say that. Um, man, ah, you know, that's a good question. I don't know if I want to go too far back in time, even though you know, uh, there's some awesome elements, but life was just harder back, you know, if you go 100, 200 years back, you know? So, um, I don't know, maybe I'd, maybe I'd go back a couple thousand years and, and see if all the, all the things that happened with the religious um, circumstances were really facts and did they really happen? Maybe then I'd be seeing, take a camera with me. This didn't happen. I don't know. I'm just busting chops. I don't know. The future, the future is a little scary too. I don't know. My, I let, I'll let my my kids and their generation have to deal with that. So, do you think it's uh, out there right now? Do you think there's time travelers, or I know it's a different subject, but what do you? Think? I mean, I think that I think with technology, I don't know what's going to happen in the next fifty years. I think anything's possible. It really is. You see how fast everything's got from say just the last twenty years let alone the last 50 and 100 years. So, um, I mean, yeah, I think that's probably very possible. I don't know when, but I think, you know, when people look, I always marvel at like a jumbo jet, or we just did the, the Monsters of Rock Cruise in the, sh in the ship. I mean, it's insane how big those things are. You know, if you brought somebody back from, you know, 2000 years ago, who was on some little boat crossing, you know, you know the Dead Sea, and said, "Look at this." They would, I mean, they would, they would be terrified, or or a plane taking off. You know, like a 747, or you know, big cargo military jet. They would be, they probably wouldn't. I mean, they'd be terrified. That's the only thing, way to describe it, probably. But, um, you know, but I mean, look at planes fly, and we take it for granted. I mean, just get on a plane and go. I mean, it's insane that that actually is something that we achieved. So humans so we've done some pretty rad things we have humans we've done some some bad terrible ugly things too but you know we've done some incredible things as well um so yeah who knows what's gonna be what the future holds i mean i'm a little scared for the the rapidness of technology it's a little concerning um you can't stop it you know here we are you know doing something like this was sci-fi right Having a conversation, you know, a visual, a video cover, that was something out of a movie, you know? Strange, you know, yes. We don't, we don't think twice, I'll zoom in, you know? So it's pretty funny. Yeah, I first saw this on uh, Back to the Future. I saw the uh, Michael J. Fox, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> kind of predicted go. this stuff, yeah. That was pretty cool. But anyways, uh, that's, oh, a different, wow. that's a different subject, but uh, before I let you go, John, what's next for the band uh, after these tours, or what's on your agenda right now? Uh, we're doing this run, and we're doing uh, like three and a half weeks or so in Europe, which is cool because we haven't been there since like 2019, so it'll be fun. We always love and uh, appreciate our European fan base, and it's always fun to go do festivals there, doing Vakken, which is, you know, a big monster. 
of a show, a festival. Um, and we're writing some tunes, you know, we're trying to hurry up a little bit, but Armored Saint doesn't go so fast sometimes with that, but you know, it's, uh, we're, we're on it and uh, we're writing some tunes and they're sounding great. Awesome. Thank you, John. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll see you in Texas soon. Uh, with uh, All right, brother. See you there. Come on out to the show and say hello to me, all right? I will, John. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, man. A true badass vocalist in any way or form, shape that you want to talk about vocals and singers. This guy is the shit for sure, man. So a graspy badass rock metal voice from Armored Saint. And right now they are on tour. They just kicked off a tour with the legendary Queensryche uh, US tour that is and you have to go check him out man these guys are just badass and a big thank you to John Bush for uh, talking to us and chatting with us about the lifespan of Armored Saint we asked him about Anthrax and awesome answers right there so anyways awesome thank you John for the time and don't forget to stream their music go to their live gigs support Armored Saint all the guys so anyways Thank you guys for checking out the podcast, downloading, streaming, subscribing, blah, blah, blah. Don't forget to keep it metal. That metal interview.